Uh, hey everyone, this is the video lecture that goes with the first week of uh, uh, 622 uh, field internship class. Um, what I wanted to do real quick is just um, introduce myself uh, and then uh, just uh, uh, share a few thoughts about our course. Um, and then uh, I'm going to switch PowerPoints and um, talk about the, um, the, and do the getting started lecture. So um, I didn't put these first couple of slides on uh, D2L. Um, the, uh, the getting started lecture is, um, these first couple of slides are, are um, there's, uh, just, just a couple of things to remember. So, uh, my name is Brad Lynn. Uh, you may see my, my full name listed as Braden. Um, I think it says, um, uh, Mr. Lynn up in the, um, up in the, the D2L thing. Uh, you can call me Brad if you like. Um, Dr. Lynn is also fine. Um, I've been with uh, Edinburgh actually for a couple of years, um, and I started before I finished my uh, doctoral degree, so that's why it says uh, Mr. Lin. Uh, it would it would be okay to call me Dr. Lin if you want, um, but like I said, Brad is is perfectly fine. Um, I just haven't had the the chance to contact the D2L people and say uh, change it from Mr. Lin to Dr. Lin, but. Um, Really, like I said, uh, Brad is is perfectly fine. Um, so we do uh, we do office hours a little bit differently in this class um, since uh, since this is fully online. Uh, call my cell phone. Uh, it's listed on the syllabus. So I'll give it to you real quick. It's area code five eight five seven five zero seventy three twenty eight. I uh, call anytime nine a.m. to nine p.m. Uh, seven days a week. I'm in the Eastern uh, time zone. Uh, if you're in a different time zone, um, let me know and we can we can work out some uh, some some alternate arrangement. Uh, I, ha I am happy to talk outside of those hours. I just um, uh, that's just sort of sort of what I go by. But like I said, if you're um, you know you work late or, or you know, um, something you know something works better or for you, I'm, like I said, I'm happy to talk outside of uh, outside of those hours. Uh, and that includes on weekends. I'm happy to talk on the weekends as well. I realize students lots of times are doing things um, uh, on the weekends, and that's fine. Uh, at any rate, if you call, I'll answer if I'm able. Uh, if I don't answer, leave a message. I'll call you back. Uh, I typically call uh, between the hours of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Um, I don't like to call past 9 p.m. just because I, I get worried about, uh, you know, waking people up or, or um uh, you know, having a phone go off in a, in a quiet household or something like that. Um, you can also email me. Uh, I check email at least once a day uh, and at least once on the weekends. Um, and then, of course, you can post on uh, D2L in the uh, the questions tab. There's a couple of forums there. I do check D2L at least uh, at least once a day. Um, at any rate, I think I'm, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. Um, it, it rarely do I ever go sort of more than a than like the next day, uh, returning a phone call or an email or something like that. But on the off chance, I do miss an email. Uh, feel free, and I, you know, if I haven't responded for 24 hours or something like that, feel free to, uh, uh, shoot me another email and say, Hey, I don't think you saw this or something like that. Um, so the couple of quick notes about our course, uh, typically a week runs from Monday to Sunday. So the, the new content, uh, sort of opens on a, on a Monday morning, uh, like it, like at 12.01 a.m. or whatever. Um, and then things are typically due um, the, on a Sunday at the end of the day. And 11.59, again, is, is, um, is, is fine for submitting things. There aren't actually a ton of really hard deadlines in this course. Um, the one exception to that is um, that you must post an introduction in that week one introduction forum by 11.59 on Monday, January 13th. Uh, just like other courses at Edinburgh, this sort of confirms your enrollment in the course. Um, so you absolutely make sure you do that, um, even if it's just, you know, hi, how are you? Uh, I'll come back and add to the post later. You're welcome to do that as well. But make sure you you post something in that so that your your enrollment is sort of confirmed uh, in the course. Uh, after that, we will, um, uh, you know, we have a couple of weeks of activities here, and then and then field placements begin week four. Uh, if you don't have a field placement, you get in touch with me or uh, Natalie Montero. She's the the field coordinator for the department, um, so that we can uh, we can sort through that. Um, syllabus is on uh, D two L. It's got all the assignments, uh, due dates, things like that. Um, they're also posted on uh, on, on D two L. So um, I, I know. Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll save that for the end. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick is pause the video and switch over to the uh, to the other 
um, the other PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so uh, you do have these slides available to you on D2L if you want to sort of follow along or take notes or anything like that. Uh, you certainly can can just use them uh, here on the, the screen as well. Um, whoops, let me adjust things real quick. Oh, okay, uh, that's better. I guess the um, the screen recorder would have cut off the top of the slide there. Um, so the um, the sort of overall gist of of this uh, talk um, is is that uh, field is um, it's an interesting time. It's an important part of of one's educational development. It's an important part of the process of becoming a, a social worker. This is really a chance for you to sort of start to connect with the values of the profession and and sort of put those values into action. Um, field is is sort of um, the it's called the signature pedagogy of social work education, and it's actually sort of unique to our profession in that we um, we in that we encourage students uh, or the profession of social work encourages students to um, to adopt the role of a professional social worker while they're still students um, and, and that's that makes for sort of competent and effective practitioners it's sort of a hallmark of our discipline um, nevertheless field can be um, it can be tough it can be stressful um, and certainly if that's the case remember that I'm, I'm a resource for you and and if you're struggling uh, with anything um, uh, reach out to me so that that's the kind of thing we can talk about. Um, my goal here really is to sort of is to move people through uh, through field um, so that they can t continue on with their education and continue on successfully and ultimately graduate and, and move out into the professional world and things like that. Um, so there there should be an orientation. Um, it may be formal. It may not be formal, but. Um, you should be familiar with the agency's, um, you know, policies and mission and history, that kind of thing. Um, the, you're you're going to encounter sort of office politics and, and agency routines and things like that. And again, this is one of those things that's really hard to sort of prepare students for formally because office politics are uh, are so variable from agency to agency and student to student. But if this is one of the places where you encounter challenge. Uh, it's, uh, let me know, and, and, and I'm happy to, to sort of talk through um, that kind of thing. As I was saying here, um, sort of a second ago, the, the uh, and I'm just going to move myself so that we're, uh, so that you can see all the words on the slide. Um, the, the purpose of field really is to sort of uh, try on um, the, the, uh, the skills and, and, uh, and, um, uh, sort of different different features of the of the profession um, and one of sort of the hallmark features of the social work profession is actually this idea of, um, of home visits where uh, and and there's sort of a historical precedent for home visits and that we go to you know where people are we don't necessarily ask people uh, to come to us so home visits are really interesting they're very illuminating um, um, they're they're often good for clients because uh, especially if they're homebound, you can uh, you can sort of you can get to them, and it's not a challenge for them to get to you. Um, so remember, though, when you when you do go to someone's home, um, you're sort of always assessing uh, for exits, for weapons, uh, for utilities. You're assessing for food, um, or, or you know you're assessing for sort of cleanliness and, and, and things like that. Um, and and from a historical perspective, home visits have actually provided a lot of information about uh, sort of how well clients are functioning. Um, again, as I, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but but if uh, if you're challenged by home visits for some for some reason, um, they can be sort of emotionally challenging, and they can certainly be even physically challenging. Um, that's one of the things to contact with me so that so that we can uh, that we can so that we can sort of talk about it. Um, obviously, the me and uh, the department and the university uh, and the agency want you to be safe in someone's home. So, so make sure you're aware of your surroundings. And make sure you're aware of exits, um, uh, things like that. Um, so, as I said, safety is sort of a, a, a paramount concern. Oops, paramount concern. Um, and so, I've put just sort of a couple of, of general um, uh, general things. Here, um, park under a light if you can. Um, let the agency know where you're going. Let your field supervisor know where you're going. Uh, you can let a loved one know where you're going as well if that's if that's um, if that's possible. Uh, I recommend 
uh, shoes that are easy to get around in. Um, uh, um, and that's a, I recognize that's tough to balance with professionalism. Um, and so again, uh, I realize that's probably not a particularly clear uh, direction. So, so feel free to contact with me if you have questions about that. Um, as I said, um, oops, went too far. Talking about safety here, uh, sort of let someone know where you are. Go with a coworker if you can, especially if you're doing a sort of first home visit or first couple of home visits. Uh, in fact, some agencies may actually make uh, a sort of shadowed or accompanied home visit part of the orientation process. Um, and then, of course, make sure you know you have an exit and no one's blocking your exit. That that kind of thing. Um, there, there aren't, um, there's not a lot of evidence to suggest that, that social workers are, social work is a dangerous profession. Um, and I'd like to think part of that is because we have a good relationship with our clients, but, um, and, and in general, we're doing sort of things to improve our clients' lives. So we don't necessarily have, uh, confrontational relationships with clients. Um, but, uh, um, I, I'd also like to think that part of the sort of safety record of social work is due to, um, the precautions and sort of awareness that, that social workers have. Uh, some of you might be in field placements where the client is the, is the community. Um, and if that's the case, um, that's a whole sort of other set of challenges that, again, I'm happy to, uh, to always uh, talk about. If that is the case, make sure you have boundaries between sort of work and, and, and home life um, that can be tough when when the work requires sort of flexibility and hours, you might be working on evenings and weekends, that kind of thing. Um, the uh, big task, or one of the big tasks here for um, the early part of the semester is actually developing the, the learning agreement. There's lots of stuff on D2L to help you through this process. Um, it should be done sort of in consultation with your supervisor at the agency. Uh, but remember, I'm a resource uh, for you as well. Um, if you're if you're struggling to uh, uh, to, to put the learning uh, contract together, um, the the learning contract sort of follows the nine CSWE competencies. I've put an, there's an example here on the screen. Uh, you can you can take a look at that if you want. Um, so the there's a a competency and and you're provided with the competency that comes from CSWE. But then it's up to you to fill in the task and the evaluation. Uh, and so your, your field supervisor is gonna be a good resource for the task itself. And then um, they also probably can help with the evaluation, but I can help with that as well. Um, so essentially the evaluation could, should correspond to evidence that the task has been completed. In other words, um, what could we look to? What's the evidence that, uh, that you um, that you facilitated that task. In the case of a women's group, like I put here, um, it certainly would be, you know, inappropriate for me as the faculty member to observe the, the women's group. However, I could uh, see, um, for example, your case notes um, that were that um, uh, that were completed, um, or you could show me evidence that that you completed the the women's group or facilitation of a women's group by, um, for example showing me the case notes or something like that. This is an example, again, you know, lots of other, of other examples and, uh, and certainly I'm happy to help. Um, um, or, sir, sorry about that. Certainly happy to talk with you if, uh, if you have questions about how to evaluate those tasks. So um, a big part of uh, sort of the field experience is sort of um, being socialized into the profession. And one of the things that, oops, that, um, that uh, uh, social workers are sort of socialized into is is talking about clients. Um, it is important in field to sort of cultivate a professional identity and a sense of professionalism, and, and some of that comes from from how we talk about clients um, in uh, in supervision or in in meetings, uh, in case conferences, and, and things like that. So I've just put a few guidelines here. Um, that those uh, that sort of professional identity sort of um, extends to writing about clients uh, as well, and I've listed a few other guidelines that I'll I'll let you read here um, on the screen. Um, most of uh, of uh, of us who are writing notes uh, when we're students, um, they're they're reviewed uh, by a supervisor, and so you should expect feedback, and you should um, um, you should expect to work with that person a little bit about uh, writing sort of uh, 
good and, and, and effective uh, effective notes. A um, oh, couple of couple more there, and I will just move myself so you can uh, so you can see them. Um, and then um, a couple of uh, just concluding. Uh, thoughts here. As I said a second ago, there is, um, oops, there is a, the sort of overarching task here is, is to, to sort of um, work your, uh, work into the role of, of professional social worker. And a big part of that is, like I said, cultivating a professional identity. Um, you're, you're representing yourself and, and the institution and the profession. Uh, and so, so think about what professionalism looks like. Now, I, I'm not, um, uh, and and um, nor would it be appropriate really to provide sort of a universal set of of guidelines about what constitutes professionalism. There's actually a lot of variability between offices, between parts of the country, um, about what constitutes professional behavior, professional dress dress code, um, that kind of thing. Uh, and because this is so individualized. Um, and uh, and frankly dynamic i mean what's considered professional changes uh changes with time um it's it's really like i said it's something to to kind of think about your goal in general should be to to present a, a professional identity uh, and prevent yourself or excuse me present yourself as a as a as a professional uh social worker um and so like i said these are these are things to think about but again if if this is something you're struggling with uh, feel free to, to contact me. So uh, just by way of conclusion, field is a really exciting time. It's it's a chance to sort of um, operationalize the skills you've been reading and thinking and learning about in the classroom. Uh, field is a, it's a really fun component. Um, lots of students have, have really good memories. It's a chance to get to know an agency that you could potentially work for uh, at some point in the future. It's a chance to start to make contacts with other professionals in the field. Um, and so it's a it's a really rewarding part of uh, of uh, the the journey to to an MSW and to to sort of professional independent practice. Um, remember, I'm a resource. Um, we are. Uh, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to talk about whatever it is you need. Um, so thanks for watching. Uh, welcome to uh, Social Work 622 and the spring semester. <laughs>